Hello there and uh, good evening uh, my dear friends. Today I feel uh, sentimental and nostalgic. I'd like to give honor to a very honorable person, Justice Amelita G. Tolentino presiding uh, justice at one time of the 4th Division Court of Appeals, presiding judge, Regional Trial Court, Branch 274, Paranaque City, that handled the People versus Web case, a bar reviewer and law professor at the University of Manila, and the University of Perpetual Health. So the light of the day in Tondo, Manila on July 4, 1944 and said goodbye to us last Thursday, March 9, 2023 in the residence at BF Resort, Las Piñas. Just a uh, few hours ago, I said goodbye to her in that uh, very touching Holy Mass that was offered for her. And I had the privilege, just like a member of the family and a very close friend to be holding the holy water to sprinkle her remains touch her coffin and say goodbye my dear friend Justice Amelita G. Tolentino and I would like to dedicate this particular discussion on civil procedure, an area where she had expertise, not only in her years of practice as a lawyer, as a presiding judge in the regional trial court, and finally as justice of the court of appeals. Let me now push our get together on civil procedure by laying to you the map of what is called procedural law or previously labeled as remedial law. Perhaps uh, I feel uh, more comfortable using the terminology procedural law because to me the word remedio somewhere along the line gives me the feeling of palusot. And so when they restored the title procedural law rather than remedial law in the bar exams, I felt good. Now, showing the uh, profile of, uh, let's call it a uh, roadmap for uh, procedural law, we have these major components of criminal procedure, civil procedure, evidence, provisional remedies, special civil action, and special proceedings. We have earlier already uh, uploaded in YouTube the uh, concept of criminal procedure. And I hope you've been able to uh, look at that uh, and help you understand the simplified and uh, amended uh, guidelines on criminal procedure. 
we have uploaded uh, the first wave of uh, the amended uh, rules on evidence, particularly uh, on testimonial evidence of a witness. But we left uh, the second and third module on documentary evidence and object evidence still uh, to be uploaded. We have not done any uh, uploads yet and we are scheduling this on provisional remedies, special civil action, and special proceedings. But in this uh, get-together, we will handle a very beautiful component of procedural law, which is civil procedure. In reality, when you look at the rules of court, I hate to uh, bring up the concept, the simple concept of an engineer, where the uh, shortest distance between two points is a straight line. And when I tried to study procedural law, which is the essence of my going back to law school, I have uh, over the years waited so long and along the way picked up a lot of substantive laws, both uh, in my uh, career in business management as well as also my own uh, interest in learning the law. But the matter of procedural law, which is in the rules of court, is something I had to wait for me to come back to law school. And when I went through the exercise of understanding the rules of court, I will never forget having gotten in three rounds, grades of five, on evidence when the recitation demanded a word-for-word -word definition of a warrant of arrest. And just to show my own uh, rebelliousness at memorization, up to now, I refuse to recite the exact definition of what is, uh, uh, what they call this uh, evidence based on the rules of court. But uh, the bulk of uh, the concepts in procedural law is in civil procedure. And this is the irony. When you looked at the delays in the uh, cases that are pending before our courts all over the Philippines, you will encounter that while there is already a delay in criminal procedure, the delay in civil procedure is simply mind-boggling. You know, uh, cases lasting for 10 years, 12 years, 15 years, 20 years, or involving civil procedure is normal. And when you look, uh, when you try to uh, listen to the battery of exchanges among lawyers where there is a presiding judge who equally uh, seems to have certain misgivings on what rulings to make, they would be revolving along civil procedure. And I do appreciate that the Supreme Court, uh, spearheaded by then Chief Justice, uh, nine, uh, uh, amendments to the 1997 rules on civil procedure. And true enough, uh, there were significant improvements. Too bad, when you looked at the amended uh, rules on civil procedure, you still to continue to get uh, rattled and mesmerized and confused. The simple reason is, when you talk about procedure, you talk about a system, a set of steps in order to achieve an end, which has, of course, a beginning and an end that goes through certain processes. I am so biased on the concept of mapping, you know, a map, 
that in the corporate world was introduced to make the the the, the concept of flow charting a little more user friendly and so i would like to advance the hypothesis that our rules of court particularly civil procedure demands a mapping approach in order for the system to be easily understood by the practicing lawyers in litigation as well as the presiding judge. During the interview in 2016, before the Judicial and Bar Council <coughs> for Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, I was asked that uh, considering the limited time I have, should I be appointed to the Supreme Court? What would be the objective or target that I would aspire for? I am not sure that uh, that kind of public uh, interview would allow me to explain that the major bottleneck and continuing major bottleneck in our judicial uh, speed of justice is that the uh, rules of court, particularly on civil procedure, does not appear to be a straight line the way it is written right now in the form of rules of civil procedure. As a matter of fact, I still have to see a simple uh, diagram, a simple map, where there is a violation of the right and there is a redress of that right on the basis of judgment. And so having missed that, and during that interview, I wanted to say, if I have only two years to be in the Supreme Court, and that is the only thing I could do, I would be proud to enter and leave the Supreme Court in a two-year stint, having rewritten the rules of court, particularly on civil procedure, and introduce a procedural map for civil cases. Unfortunately, as I expected, nobody understood what I wanted to do, and I did not anymore make that forum a uh, learning process for people who may not have fully appreciated what has been known in the corporate world as mapping the process. And uh, with that kind of frustration uh, continuing to bug me, not only as a practicing lawyer, not only as a law professor, but worse, being dean of the College of Law and not doing anything about uh, that loophole in our system, I have always dreamed, I have always aspired to come up at least with my portion, my contribution to improve the speedy disposition of civil cases. And so I, it has taken me a couple of, probably a few months, to figure out how this particular presentation on civil procedure would work out. And I finally figured out, essentially, two approaches. And the ap first approach is a simple mapping of the process from the time a right of a person has been violated by an act or omission of another person and to see how the entire process would flow until a judgment is rendered that sure you violated that right and therefore you are bound to answer under this judgment of whatever damages you have to and this first part will be a one complete module, and this is what I dedicate to my wonderful friend, the late Justice Amelita G. Valentino.
And after we are through with that flowchart, we cut this particular get together because we move to the second part, the second module, where each component, major systems component of civil procedure is now discussed and analyzed on the basis of the narrative given in the rules of court. So what do we achieve? We achieve first a flowchart or a map of the entire process. And so we see we have a big picture of the alpha and the omega, the beginning and at the end of the uh, judicial process involving civil cases. And then as a second wave, we now go over the major components of that system and discuss the rudiments, not all the fine points, but the major rudiments to explain its major segment. And so as we move now to civil procedure, our discussion of civil procedure will be broken down into the following modules. To me, what uh, is sentimental to me, and I dedicate to Justice Tolentino, is this portion on the process flow of the court proceedings on civil procedure. And after we're, we're, we're done that with that, that is module one, we cut this particular uh, YouTube upload so that we can schedule now a second module, a, se a separate uh, uh, upload that may cover either all of the remaining major processes. And these are the major processes. The discussion on cause of action, the discussion on the complaint and answer, a uh, total understanding of pre-trial and judicial affidavit, trial, and then judgment and execution. Somewhere along the line, uh, we may even have modules separately for cause of action, complaint and answer, and so on, depending upon the length. Because to my mind, since these are the most challenging, I would not like to use the word difficult, even if the average passing mark of most law students in the bar examinations is very low in this very subject of procedural law. There are only about uh, two schools in the Metro Manila who show a respectable performance, and this is UP law and Ateneo law. The rest of the law schools register the students in Metro Manila, both full-time and working, they're very low and even flunking grades in procedural law. And so there must be something wrong. And I hope this approach to civil procedure would allow me to uplift the opportunity and chance of the bar candidates and our law students and definitely our laymen including our practicing lawyers and perhaps with utmost uh, apology our own uh, presiding trial court judges to understand and make the whole process simpler. It will be the biggest compliment for me if this process flow that we are about to discuss would be literally uh, painted or drawn, you know, on the, on, on the wall of the trial court so that uh, everybody would become familiar and you know, in one wall you've got the entire process from Alpha to Omega. And so uh, all of these uh, you know, delays would now be pinpointed and say the judge can probably say, oh, we are supposed to be here already based on our retrial order and look at all the delays that we are experiencing. And so without much ado, let us start our mapping or process flow of civil procedure. Para po sa inyo ito, as my, as our farewell uh, uh, manifestation to Justice uh, Amelita G. The judicial 
process flow for matter. Start with an individual who has a right. And that right can come from either the law or a contract, which is the law as between the parties, or a quasi contract in negotiorum hestio and solutio in deputy, a delict or a violation or, or consisting of a criminal act, or a quasi delict, which essentially may be the act of negligence. And so a person who possesses the basic human rights of life, liberty, and property will have his right coming from law, contract, quasi-contract, delay, and quasi delay. Doon po nang niya gagagaling ang karapatan ng isang taong maghabla. Dahil meron siyang karapatan and this is enshrined you know, in the Constitution, ayun, palagay, Section 1, Article 3, no person shall be deprived of life, of liberty, of property, without due process of law. Medyo negative na yung the way it is stated. Eh. It already presupposes that everybody knows that any person under the Philippine Republic is entitled to life, is entitled to liberty, is entitled to property. And no one can encroach and reduce that particular life, liberty, or property. And if it is the state that violates that, then it is the uh, Bill of Rights that is the protective mantle against the state, reducing the life, the liberty and the property of a person. However, when the, the action has something to do with interpersonal relationship, then civil uh, law comes in and civil procedure brings up which starts with what right do you have that has been violated and the right could you could have earned in law you could have earned in a contract, you could have earned in a quasi-contract, you could have earned in delic or quasi-delic. So the, fun the, the starting point of uh, a civil case, a civil action, and therefore the process called civil procedure starts with the right. And everybody has a right because of the... Uh, Bill of Rights in the Constitution. The defendant, respondent in this particular structure, committed a violation of that right. And so when that right has been violated, you have now two people involved, one enjoying the right and the other one violating it. And in the process, therefore, the person whose right has been violated will be the complaining plaintiff. And the one who violated that will be the respondent defendant. Dahil mag-ahabla mag na ito, magsusumbog na ito. So sasagot na ito respondent at pagtatanggol na niya yung kanyang sarili. Continuing further. When we have that structure now of the plaintiff having a right. And that right which we already saw a while ago has been violated by a person's act or omission. Then the violation of that right is what is called the cause of action. And so the, the, the action or the omission of a person that violated the right of another person is now the one that brings about the cause of action. And so that particular person acquires a cause of action. In other words, a reason you know, to file a case in court from the defendant's violation of his fundamental right. And so that cause of action brings out 
what is called the civil action or civil case, which is the form of a complaint that is elevated to the courts. And so the plaintiff now files a complaint, the civil action to sue the defendant arising from the cause or to enforce or protect the plaintiff's right or to prevent or redress a wrong against him. When that complaint now is in the possession of the judge, then within five days, the judge issues summons through his clerk of court. And this particular summons now is served, is given, if you don't want to use the word serve, it's given to the defendant. And so, uh, this is where due process comes in. The defendant now will be told to file his answer to the complaint within 30 calendar days after service of summons, unless a different period is fixed by the court. This is in accordance with Section 1, Rule 1 of the amended 1997 rules on civil procedure. So, nag PPT ka na through the intervention of the judicial process through a presiding judge. And so, when, when therefore the defendant submits his answer to the court, copy furnish the complainant, the complainant has the option to file within 15 days, a reply. And uh, parenthetically, that reply would come in because the dependent must have rendered an answer with an actionable document and maybe coming up with uh, what are called affirmative defenses supported by actionable document that would now allow the plaintiff to respond by way of a reply. So normally, this ping pong, or first you throw the complaint because there is a right that was violated, by the right of the plaintiff that was violated. The court intervenes and tells the defendant, you explain why you should not uh, suffer uh, penalty here. Uh, and so, the defendant now uh, puts up his defenses uh, by way of his, uh, uh, what you call this, negative as well as affirmative defenses, which is uh, either to deny or to set up uh, certain counterclaims or reasons why he should not be held liable. And so the plaintiff can file a reply within 15 calendar days sorry, from the service of the pleading responded to. The pleading referred to here is the answer. And so when uh, the situation uh, brings the court to a to, to, to a, what you call this, a situation where there is now a complaint by the plaintiff and the respondent answered that complaint, then that opens up the opportunity for the court to say, you better get together now with me and let us find out exactly what is the violation of your right that triggered your filing a complaint and now with your answer, why are you denying that you have performed an acromission that brought about the uh, uh, violation of the right? We will go together, the three of us, by way of a notice of pre-trial. We will meet the three of us. And so this is now communicated by the judge by way of issuing a notice of pre-trial in five days to set a pre-trial in 60 calendar days from the filing of the last responsive pleadings. Here to simplify the uh, high-sounding praise here, what we are in effect saying is after 
uh, the judge has received the answer. Or even when the complainant files a reply, you know, either by the way of the answer or the reply, the judge is to issue a notice of pre-trial within five days from the receipt of either the answer or the reply. And this notice of pre-trial is telling the plaintiff and the defendant or respondent, we will meet together for the first time in 60 days. That is what it means, no? That five-day notice made after receiving the last responsive pleading of either an answer or reply will trigger a notice of reply within five days. And this notice of reply is saying, we will see each other in 60 days from now. So we will understand what is the right that you are saying has been violated by the, this particular person's acquisition and the uh, uh, respondent dependent will now be asked why did you commit that act or why did you commit or oh, why did you uh, miss uh, that kind of omission if ever you did and so he will have the opportunity to say no I did not I did not uh, do an, that act and I did not also make any omission. Uh, and so you have to prove. Okay, so magaharap na sila by way of a pre-trial. Okay. So they wait for 60 days to get together and they, the three of them are now preparing for a pre-trial under Rule 18. What happens now to the pre-trial? The pre-trial demands, no? That one, the plaintiff and the defendant should appear at the pre-trial. And normally, they would also be required to bring along their lawyer, their counsel. And the absence in the pre-trial will have very serious consequences. Either, otherwise, you, know, you put in a little common sense here. May nagre-reklamong tao. No, nagsumbong sa judge. Sabi nun judge, oh, eto may reklamo sa'yo, sagutin mo. Di nagsagutan naman. E mabuti, magharap tayo para makita, oh, ikaw, talaga bang ikaw eh nasaktan yung iyong karapatan? Opo. Dahil sa kanyang uh, aksyon or omisyon? Opo. O ikaw naman, eh meron ka raw aksyon or omisyon? O talaga bang meron? O wala po. O sige, magharap tayo, doon tayo mag-usap. At hindi lang yun ang gagawin natin sa pre-trial. No? Hindi lang ako kayo haharap sa akin kung hindi. I will even bring in a third person, a mediator, no? na bibigyan ko kayo ng 30 days mag-usap doon. Kung hindi magkasundo, then pipilitin kung pagkasunduin ka rin kayo under the judicial dispute resolution. So, Yung ginawa nyo sa barangay na nagdakdakan kayo, nagpilit yung kayo na magkasundo, na hindi na kanundo. Kaya nakarating dito eh, may certificate to file action. Kaya nga nag-file ka na ng action. Kasi assuming na magkapit bahay kayo and you fall under the requirement ng barangay justice system. So nandito na kayo ngayon. Ah, hindi tayo kagad magbabakbakan. O, titignan muna natin. Ano bang sinasabi mong dahilan kung bakit ikaw eh nasaktan dahil binayulate yung right mo. Anong ginawa niya? O ikaw naman, ginawa mo daw yun. Ano naman ang totoo? Ginawa mo ba o hindi? So yun, magkaharap tayo. And then, uh, kung hindi magkasundo doon sa proseso, sa pre-trial pa lang, then un court annex mediation, sa judicial dispute resolution, hindi kaya magkasundo. O sige, Dahil nilatag nyo na ebidensya nyo under the requirement mamaya na pakikita natin ang pre-trial brief. Nakalatag na ngayon. Ito ang mga uh, ebidensya mo. Merong magtitistigo na sinasabi mo na nabiolate ang right mo to specific uh, narrations. Supported by documents. No? What are documentary? And even probably if there is a need for object evidence then pwedeng ilabas. Ganon din naman ang mangyayari sa'yo. And so, the plaintiff dependent now is required to appear at the pre-trial 
Court Annex Mediation and Judicial Dispute Resolution under Section 4 of Rule 18. But at the same time, both the plaintiff and the defendant are required to file with the court the respective pretrial briefs. Hindi tayo magkikita-kita na magdadakdakan tayo. Aayusin natin, lalagyan natin ng sistema by way of a pretrial brief. And so, you will prepare a pretrial brief which in effect will now lay down you know, the, the uh, violation of your right because of the action or omission of the other party. And you will now say you will have your witnesses, you will have your documentary evidence and object evidence to lay that to prove your concern. Okay, you ang, ang, ang major uh, effort noon, ilalatag mo na, ilalabas mo na ebidensya mo sa pre-trial. Ikaw naman, ganun din. Dahil nabasa mo yung complaint niya, sumagot ka, ilalabas mo din. No? Kung sino mga witnesses mo, nasasabing hindi mo naman ginawa yan, hindi ka naman nagkulang. Ano rin ang mga documents mo na may pakikita. So ilalatag natin. O, ikaw nagahabla, o, ito ang iyong ebidensya at mga testigo. Ikaw naman ang inahabla, o ito rin ang iyong testigo at mga ebidensya. E di, right there, yung judge, hindi na nag, nanguhula kung saan pupunta itong hearing na ito. Nakikita na niya, it is just a matter of presenting in an orderly fashion na uh, according to the rules, yung latag ng mga ebidensya. And so, at that particular point, the three uh, segments of the judicial process, the uh, plaintiff who is complaining of the violation of the right, the uh, respondent defendant who is saying, hindi ko ginawa yan, o kung ginawa ko yan, may dahilan. At yung judge nakatingin, alam na kagad doon judge, kung malakas ang ebidensya nito, ang complaining, and you know, Eh, hindi naman proof beyond reasonable to, to, to substantive uh, evidence lang dito. So makikita niya kung meron talaga probable cause na. Ano. Kaya nga, o oh, sige, mag-usap na muna kayo sa court uh, an mediation at nakalatag na yung evidence nyo. And this is where there is a little loophole in the initial implementation of the courts. I have attended certain courts where the presiding judge uh, gathers the, the two contending parties and immediately refers them to a mediation. Ayaw mo na niyong makialam. Uh, with all res- due respect, mali yung ginagawa ng judges na yun, ngayon. And I hope uh, the Supreme Court and our trial court judges would notice already that kind of loophole. Hindi nila sinusunod yung dapat na procedure. Kasi bago magharap-harap yan no, sa, sa mediation, dapat may bala na eh. O, while sa mediation, hindi sila mag-uusap ng technicality and legality. Pareho nilang hawak no, yung, yung set of uh, ebidensya para sa complainant. Binigyan din ng uh, uh, respondent dependent ng kopya niya doon sa pre-trial. So, yung si mismo makikita niya, may panlahabang beto sa habla natin. Ito rin naman, hawak-hawak niya yung mga ebidensya ng pag sa kanya, makikita niya, sabi ng abogado, uy, napakalakas dito yung ebidensya to, mananalo ba tayo rito? You know? And in the process that there is doubt either on the part of the uh, complainant no or, or the, uh, the the defendant pag nagpunta sila ron sa mediation yung mediator naman siyempre uh, ano niya eh fresh tinanong natin yung magkakasundo kayo wala siyang tiniting ng ebidensya kasi walang legal technicality pero yung dalawa nagkakaalam na lalo na yung mga abogado kung sino mas malakas o ano na lang kung mas malakas yung kabila no hihingi na lang ng concession nito. Yun lang reason kung bakit yung me- sa mediation, dapat both parties already possess the set of evidences that were de- de- generated by the pre-trial conference. 
Eh, yung mga ginagawa ng karamihan ng mga judges, hindi pinilit-intin yung proseso. Wala muna ano, wala muna latagan. Hindi kayo, doon muna kayo magkasundo sa ano, sa, sa, pilitin yung magkasundo sa mediation. It does not maximize mediation. Kaya, most of the time, wala, hindi nagkasundo. Eh, paano, hindi, hindi naman nila hawak yung talagang mas total picture on either side. Kung mas malakas siya, o mas mahina siya. Yun dapat ang sikreto ng mediation na yung mas mahina no pipilitin na niya na magkasundo sila kasi mas malaki itatalo niya nakikita niya na ebidensya no oh. and yun naman kabila kung magaling oh malakas talaga tayo no? kaya pagdating sa mediation ipipilit naman niya ng konti yung katwiro niya di ba so it becomes an intelligent mediation Sa ngayon, no, siguro nangyayari sa iba yan, yung magagaling na judges at magaling na mediator. Pero I have seen that the, uh, so far, the mediations that I have participated in, wala eh, wala, wala pang opportunity malaman ng either side kung malakas siya o mahina based on handled evidences. No? Anyway, kung hindi nagkasundo, you know, the, the uh, mediation now, sabi rito, no, uh, ito, pre-trial pa lang dito. Three days before the pre-trial, mag-submit na ng pre-trial brief. No? Yun. Kaya nga yung sinasabi ko, inunahan ko na, naglalatagan na ito ng ebidensya. Hindi katulad dati, kaya mahaba. No? Naguhulaan. No? Eh, pati itong abogado, hindi niya alam kung susunod na ipipresent niya. Eh. O every hearing, eh, nag-aano siya, nag ad -lib. Under the pre-trial brief requirement, Kompleto na yung battle ano niya, yung, yung battle plan niya. Oo. Kaya kung mahina yung kanya ano, kaso, uh, kasi siya dapat eh, preponderance of evidence, eh, di ba? Hindi naman probiantis, eh, preponderance of evidence. Dapat malakas pa rin ang evidence niya. Kung mahina na, then he will have the opportunity to find the necessary witnesses and do documentary evidence to strengthen para yung attacking ano niya, fourth niya eh, malakas. Okay. So they are supposed to be ready with the pre-trial brief, uh, file na sa korte, ibinigay ng kopya dun sa kalaban in three days before the pre-trial. So pag nagalap sa sa pre-trial, nagkakaalaman na sila. Yan. Yan ang pre-trial brief. And the pre-trial brief will obviously have the uh, fundamental judicial affidavit. Because in civil cases, judicial affidavit is mandatory. Now, in criminal cases, the uh, use of judicial affidavit is subject to the acceptance of the uh, accused defendant. At uh, alam mo, kung ikaw ay mauta ka, kasi proof beyond reasonable doubt, at mahinahina sa presentation ng direct evidence yung kalaban mo, no? eh, sabi mo, as a defense, hindi ka pumapayag na judicial affidavit and the judge has to order di ano na wala tayong judicial affidavit dito uh, direct examination or kung tingin mo naman mapapabilis mo kasi kulang yung firepower niya o yung ikaw ang, ang prosecution sa criminal case birahin mo ngayon ng judicial affidavit kasi kung wala siyang firepower kita mo na kagad sa judicial affidavit Pag nag-present pa lang siya, no, for example, uh, uh, prosecution siya, alam mo na agad kung saan siya babaray. Okay? Pero yun ang pinag-uusapan sa criminal cases where it is provided doon sa, sa rules that uh, introduce the judicial affidavit rule. Kinover kasi yun both civil and uh, what they call this criminal cases doon. So dito, kailangan ang judicial affidavit rule in civil cases. Mandatory. And so because you have judicial affidavit, that judicial affidavit now will bring up issues. Ano ba pinaga, pinaga, ano, ano ba talaga pinag-aawa yan? Meaning, ano ba talaga yung karapatan mo na na-violate? Yun ang cause of action. Dapat malinaw yun. Okay. Ikaw ba? Uh, tinatanggap mo ba na ginawa mo yun? O hindi rin. Yan. So, may conflict na kagad sa issue. Sabi nito, ginawa mo, sabi niya, hindi ko ginawa. Okay. Contentious issue, subject to evidence. Stipulation. 
Pwede bang uh, wag na natin pagdebatihan yung mga ano, yung mga maliliit na bagay. O for example, ikaw ang complainant. Ganyan. Uh, ikaw ba tinatanggap mo na itong nakahabla dito, siya yung ano, siya yung depend, uh, de- defendant ng resp- uh, responded. No? Tinatanggap mo ba na may authority itong court na ito? to to undertake this trial or for that yun, yun. stipulations eh kung magaling ka ipa-stipulate mo na rin yung 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 lahat ng grounds mo tingnan mo kung maiisa mo tatanggap pa syempre ito namang kabila mauutak din ito binabanta hindi niya tatanggap eh oo of course yung names of witnesses kailangan nakalagay yan both sides and then all the documents documentary evidences hindi lang nakalatag mamarkahan na kaya hindi na po pwede dati ilalagay mo yung ano mo yung witness mo sabi mo uh, may may natatandaan ka bang deed of sale meron oh ito yung deed of sale at saka sasabihin pa lang your honor we may we request that deed of sale be marked exhibit A wala na ngayon yun dito pa lang sa pre-trial latag lahat ang documentary evidence and object eh. mamarkana dito sa prosecution asa sa complainant side, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, ganun. Tapos pagdating na naman sa respondent side, no, exhibit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. No? Including yung concept na, eh, paano yan? Hindi original yan. Again, yung on the evidence, hindi naman kailangan ng original parati. No? And uh, that is already admitted. Except when what is being uh, proven by the document are the contents. Kasi pag contents, pwede ng doktorin yun. So, kailangan may original. Pero pinag-uusapan lang, the existence of the document, then, a reproduced, a faithful reproduction will be good enough. Even better, o oh, ito, Xerox copy, ito yung original. You compare mo na, okay ba? Kung oh, mamarkahan nyo. You know. And so, out of that particular uh, get-together, the judge now will come up with a very important script He will now have a pre-trial order. Out of this, all of this discussion, sasabihin niya, oh, a pre-trial order natin. Ano bang issues na pinag-aawayan nyo? Binagin na natin, ha? Oh, ito issue. Ito, hindi issue. Ito, burloloy lang ito. No? Ito talaga ang issue. Guilty or not guilty, uh, na binayulit mo, hindi ka nagbayad. Okay. Oh, may sabi mo nagbayad. So, may issue doon, bayad o hindi bayad. Stipulation, no? ito, hindi na natin pagdidibatihan. Both of you accepted this. No? O, ito yung mga witnesses mo. Ha? Pangalan, itong purpose kung bakit sila magwi-witness. Ikaw din, ganun din sa pre-trial mo. Ilalagay natin yan sa pre-trial order lahat. Nakasummarize yan. Yung pinag-usapan natin sa pre-trial. Nasa, and then yung mark documents. Ilalagay natin, exhibit A, exhibit B, nakalagay na dun sa uh, pre-trial order. Oo. At uh, pati yung ano, pati yung kabila, no, both sides. No. So on the basis of that, kung may pre-trial order na, yun ang script. No, yun ang susundin. Yun ang, this is the most important thing on the revision of the civil procedure na dati-dati, labo-labo lang ito, hindi binibigyan ng ating kahit na binabanggit na. This time, the Supreme Court said, oy, gumawa kayo ng script. In fact, kasama nga dito, dapat nga i-flow chart nyo eh. Oh, meron na silang mapping requirement. Hindi palang ginagawa ng mga judges. Yung judges ang pinapagawa nung mismong mapa. Oh, oh, nakalatag na yung mga dokumento at saka witness. Oh, lagyan nyo na na schedule. Kaya dito pumapasok na rin yung schedule ng trial. Oo, oh, oh, merong ano. Eh, yung, yung rule on uh, one day, one witness trial is uh, very important. No? And, uh, that will accelerate the process okay so ayan na may pre-trial order no and that should be issued in 10 days time so ngayon pagka in order na sila ng magkaroon ng court uh, annex mediation meron ng script kasama na yung ano 30 days doon sa mediation nasa script na and therefore the script will be shortened go out of the a 30-day pre-trial, I mean, the, the court annex mediation, nagkasundo na, nagpirmahan na ng uh, compromise agreement. O hindi natutuloy yung pre-trial order. Kaya yata tinatamad yung mga judges. Ito baka magkasundo pa. E baligtad. Kasi nga wala ito, 
wala nga yung, ano, wala nga yung pressure sa mediation ng magkasundo. So parang itlog o manok eh. And so many of our uh, judges uh, do not see that, that particular situation. Okay. So, nag-pre-trial na. May pre-trial order na. Ayan. Umabas na yung pre-trial order in 10 days. Lalabas na ngayon ng order of mediation, 30 days. Pipili itong magkasundo. Hindi nagkasundo, babalik to sa judge. Judicial dispute resolution, another 15 days. Sasabihin ng judge, oh, hindi kayo nagkasundo rin sa court uh, annex mediation. Gusto nyo ba na ipasa ko yung sa iyo sa ibang judge? Para siya naman na mag-judicial uh, dispute resolution. O gusto nyo ba ako na? Oh. Kasi pag ako na, pagka nagkaroon tayo ng desisyon na hindi magkasundo, meron naman kay option. Gusto nyo ba ako na mag-handle ng trial? Oh. Kaya mas maganda kung let's say, ibang judge yung nag-judicial dispute resolution. Kung nagkasundo, wala na akong trabaho. Kung hindi nagkasundo, babalik kayo sa akin. So, tatanungin ko, o oh, gusto niyo ba ako pa rin yung magtuloy na judge? O baka na mas nagustuhan yung ano nyo, di diri rapol natin. So, those are the options in judicial dispute resolution. And so, you proceed now to trial. Eh, ano ang key dito? Eh, may, tri- may pre-trial order eh, yun na script. So, yun na, banatan na sila. Yung plaintiff's counsel presents evidence 30 days after the pre-trial conference, no? So, mag issue na ng pre-trial order, magbibilang ka ng 30 days, no? Pero, uh, hihintay mo namang matapos muna yung, uh, tawag dito, yung, yung court-assisted mediation and then judicial appeal event, no? So, it is only after that, magsisimula na kang magbilang 30 days, no? Uh, from that, uh, you already will have to start presenting your evidence kung ikaw yung plaintiff na latag mo. And you have 3 months or 90 days to finish yung latag na evidence mo. At yung uh, cons- uh, ano nun, ang, 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 ang ending doon is you make an offer of evidence, actually an offer of your documentary evidence na verbal. Bakit? Eh nakalista na naman yung doon sa ano eh sa pre-trial brief mo at nakalista na yon doon sa ano doon sa pre-trial order so kung na-present mo na yon during the hearing sasabihin mo na lang uulitin mo lang yung sinabi mo sa pre-trial brief na nilagay din sa pre-trial order your honor exhibit A ganito ang purpose niya exhibit B ganito exhibit C in fact pwede mo sabihin eh exhibit A ganito yun napatunayan namin pinasent yun exhibit B ganito napatunayan namin exhibit C ganito so that, ngayon, uh, kung may objection yung objection yung ano, ano, then immediately i-resolve ng judge yung objection to the offer of evidence. Yun. So dito, three months, pagkatapos ng every, every, ano, every, every witness may cross-examination. Ayan. So, papasok yung kabila. So kung lima witness mo, lima cross-examination. So, pagkatapos na ng cross-examination, tapos na, yun na nga, papasok na yung offer of documentary and object evidences. Pag natapos naman yan, siyempre, the same process. The process of law, ito naman defendant ang maglalatag ng kanyang ebidensya. No? So, ayun na, patawagin na niya yung witness niya, kung hindi niya did you sell epidavit, ilalatag na rin yung mga ebidensya niya based on that, and so therefore, subject then to cross-examination. And then, final offer of documentary evidence. So, tapos na. So, there, uh, dito, 90 days, dito 90 days. Okay. Kasama yung cross-examination. So, on the basis of that, the trial is almost over. And so, out of that particular process, the judge now will now say, all right, uh, the case is now submitted for resolution I will make judgment. Yeah. And in the process of this, this judgment, you know, uh, we will yeah, we will have the usual number of days because, because kung walang ano, kung walang appeal, ngayon, kung merong motion for reconsideration, it will resolve. Oh. Natapos eh, let's say, nag-issue ng judgment, eh gusto pa mag-appeal, uh, let's say, to the uh, higher court, no? Kung ito ay MTC sa RTC, 
ito na sa RTC, sa Court of Appeals on the basis of Rule 45, no? on the basis of uh, what do you call this uh, petition for review. No? And on uh, question of law and question of facts and evidence. And so, essentially, that ends our uh, what do you call this uh, mapping of judicial process. And then may judgment na eh. Kaya ito, ito na yung ano, after this particular stage, no, which is on uh, slide number 14, tapos na yung ano natin, yung process flow natin. Dahil may judgment na at the trial level. So, we now go back to our map. And so, uh, we, we have done our map. And we are about to go to the second uh, subsequent modules to discuss now the major components of its process. Okay. So this is our uh, so far uh, dedication to the late uh, good friend of mine and uh, a very good uh, member of the uh, our profession, si Justice Amilita Tolentino. Uh, Ma'am, alam na po you did a good job. Yung pong Visconde Massacre, uh, that will go down in the history of the Philippines uh, judicial system as a heavily debated uh, issue. Siyempre, yung decision nyo, based on the evidence as you appreciated it. Pagkatapos eh, pumanig sa Court of Appeals, mukhang na-appreciate naman ng Court of Appeals yung, ano nyo, yung position nyo pero ni reversa Supreme Court and so today controversial dahil tinanggap ng Supreme Court yung, yung alibi ni Webb na hindi mo tinanggap na hindi ka naniniwala na si Webb ay nandoon with all the evidences to show he was here no? so doon naman and uh, I am very happy to close this dedication for you and your uh, associates have whispered to me eh pinapasabihan mo na raw ako na magtuturo ka na gusto mo pa face to face may tonto ako kasi ikaw din naman hinahanap kung gusto rin ko rin magturo ka especially procedural law and uh, of course uh, civil law but uh, hindi tayo nakita siguro Kung nakita tayo somewhere uh, during the two-year uh, COVID, baka na-inspire ka pa, nagtuturo ka, baka humaba ang buhay mo. Kaya lang, ang kontra naman yan, eh, pag oras na natawagin tayo ni Lord, talaga namang uh, wala tayong magagawa. So, Justice Amilita Tolentino, we wish you all the happiness on the other side of, the, uh, of life. And uh, I'm sure you will have a, you must have already had a happy reunion. Kasi last Thursday, kay bumigay yung, ano mo, yung soul mo, left your body. At that point, namit mo na si St. Peter. Ang pinaka-importante, namit mo na si Jesus. Uh, definitely, I'm sure, nakangiti si Jesus sa'yo, inakap ka, masayang-masaya ka. And, uh, Nandun, nakalatag sa screen ng buong buhay mo. And there is nothing uh, that you did in your life that would allow you not to enter heaven. So, biro lang doon. Mag-enjoy ka na muna dyan, Justice Tolentino. Huwag mo na muna kaming hintayin kasi hindi pa kami nagmamadali. Hindi namin din kasi alam ko ano meron dyan. But uh, when our time comes, then we will have our happy reunion among uh, us who love this profession so much. So with this, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to close this particular first segment and we will have a second segment on the uh, details of the processes. Marami pong salamat and I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the latag ng process law using mapping as a principle.